So now we're back, we can hit this. And we can put some points into endurance. So we can get up to 23 endurance. I'll go to 20, and I'll put the Rex into Dex to get a little damage off our sword. To make Kuila go down a little quicker. She's going to go down pretty quick anyway, but uh, every little actually does help. So we can... So our endurance is still too low for that, but not to worry. As I've mentioned, I don't like it anyway. God, I love Dark Souls. It's such a good game. Like, I give Dark Souls 2 a ton of shit, but it's a great game too. It's just... I don't think you can follow this, I don't. I really don't. It's like the people who don't like this game that much because of Demon Souls. When you get the one that you fall for, it's really difficult to, to to just usurp it. It's really tough. And this is an immensely flawed game too. Like, I'm not some fanboy that thinks it's perfect, because if you listen to any of my Dark Souls content, there'll be some parts of it where I express areas that I think are severely lacking, and that could have been fixed, some of them easier than others. I mean, the frame rate in New Londo Ruins on the 360 alone is is, is reason to, to maybe avoid going there ever. But I have heard from a lot of people that regardless of how good your PC is, Dark Souls 1, because of the poor optimization of it, it can be really shitty on your machine. I never had this problem. Uh, I never came across it. And the only reason I know it exists is because I was in a guy's stream and he was saying how shit the game performed on PC. And on my PC, I got no frame rate dropping or anything. And I think it was just the dude's PC that was giving him issues or, or something on there that was, you know, not working as intended. Because I had no issue at all getting it to, to perform beautifully. And I say beautifully, it wasn't perfect, but it was as close to perfect as you're going to get with Dark Souls. Because it's a pretty damn broken game. So I saw a speedrunner do an amazing trick in Blight Town that I'm going to have to look at the fucking frame rate again. That I'm going to have to try and learn. As soon as I we got the ring, uh, we might as well put it on. Get me. Get all progressive. Is that going to kill me? Oh, Demon Souls, you have really made me misinterpret the, the distance of heights on this game. Interesting, that doesn't work as well in this game. It works considerably better in Demon's Souls. And we've been poisoned and I have no idea if I have. Bollocks. Why do I keep getting poisoned? It's because I'm too casual. I should have worn my anti-poison garments. I am a pyromancer from the swamps of Poison Land. In poison City, New Poison. But, let's never see how this goes. I'm concerned about the poison, but not overly concerned. If I stop paying it, is she going to jump? No, she's not. She's going to do that move, which is really good. For not play. But again, we're not doing as big a damage as I would have hoped. So, this is going to take... Yeah, that's the AoE. Is she going to jump? Oh no, this is a really good pattern. I don't have to tell you that was close. You know it was close. That hurt me, that. Jumping away. It's that kind of stuff that I really dislike about some of the hit detection on these games. And there's the AoE. You want to get close to her after she does the AoE, because then you can control this next part. You don't want her jumping. When she jumps, it's an opportunity to take damage you probably wouldn't have taken. Like that. Which, that's just unlucky. She almost never jumps away. It must be a positioning thing that I'm not doing right. She normally does that, AoE. And that's a delayed AoE too, which is a little bit deceptive. That's the fire breath. 
Only one fire breath, you notice. And that might be one as well. Just watch the head. That's more than one, of course. She's doing the, uh, the full thing. She's gonna hug the head. She's not hugging the head. She's swinging instead. And that's fire breath too. She's gonna do the fo foot stomp. That's kind of a rare one, and it's positional dependent. Again, I think it's because I'm at the side of her head, so now this is kind of awkward thanks to all the lava in the area. But it just disappeared, which is going to make our life a little bit easier. We can hit this bitch. With our leg attack again. Pretty rare to see that. Never underestimate the range on that sword. If the sword in this game that you get had the same range that hers does, everybody would use it all more than they already always do. AoE. Oh no, interesting, fireball. Another one of those rare ones. Apparently my aim could do with some work. That's the AoE. Easy to spot because she kind of hooks the top of the spider's head. I missed again. And that was Quilo. Got sloppy on those jump hits, but aside from that, a pretty good display of what you want to do against her if you're having trouble. Of course, you can come here with much more powerful stuff than I have right now, even though the, this is a really good sword. It's just not as powerful as it could be. Like, that black knight sword I have, I would have ruined her. If I had the halberd, you can stun lock her by hitting directly frontal on the head, and you can hit the woman and stun her. It's pretty damn brutal. But even if you just had the drake sword, the drake sword gives you 200 base attack. Uh, my attack right now is just 200. And that's with everything I've put into it. So just imagine if you'd leveled up the drake sword with a couple of scales. You, know, you could do some serious damage to that woman. But that is the second bell. And now that we've done that, we can then use the Homeward Bone, because we didn't rest here, to skip traversing our way out of Blight Town. If you're comfortable with killing Quilag and, and going down Blight Town, I recommend never using the bonfire because it's so much quicker. Of course, if you're wanting to find items and explore, and if it's your first playthrough, I don't recommend it at all. You know, Quilag killed me a dozen times on my first playthrough, probably. And even if she didn't, she probably came very close. So, something worth bearing in mind. more points into endurance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some boss souls. I know we don't have many of them, but I want to try and get a little stronger than we are, because we're going to be running through the wonderful fun house that is Sen's Fortress, and I have not done Sen's in a while. And I think Sen's, to the unfamiliar and to the rusty, uh, is a death trap. Of course. I'm not too bothered about upgrading my weapon too much from this point. Still can't wear that. Can we do this? No, nope, still too fat. God, endurance is a fickle, fickle mistress. Probably not going to do the depths or lower undead berg. <coughs> Just one of those optional areas that you don't need to do, and there's nothing I want from it. It's the same reason I didn't go through Blight Town. Uh, I've only ever been through Blight Town about two or three times. I just don't think it's fun, and I'm all about fun with this game. If it's not fun, I don't want to do it. And that's my philosophy for Blight Town, and the frame rate definitely doesn't help. But I also think it's an incredibly dishonest location. Like, every single part of it has things that are intentionally done in such a way to make it miserable for the player. It's gloomy, it's dark, 
You know, all the enemies sneak up on you and follow you and chase you. And all the enemies can poison you. And it's just, there's all those death falls and, and stuff that breaks away. And it's kind of maze-like unless you know where you're going. It's, it's just miserable. I still think Valley of Defilement is easier than it, though. A lot of people think Valley of, De Valley of Defilement is the worst thing. And I have said so myself. I think it's definitely up there. But when I've been playing it recently, you do come to appreciate just how simple it can be when you know what you're doing. Uh, that being said, the enemies in Valley of Defilement, when it's like this, where there's no real room to run past them, it's an absolute nightmare. An absolute nightmare. Especially the ones with the fire sticks that poke you and it doesn't even touch you and they still get massive damage off you. Those guys can eat a big dick because it's not even fair. But, you know, Souls games aren't meant to be fair. Now we're not doing as much damage as I would like. So, we're going to avoid them. And I don't recommend avoiding them because it probably means I'm going to die. Like that, that was real close. That guy we can afford to kill though. Can't remember what mimics are mimics. I don't think this is one. That is a uh, large titan, though, and I remember that. And of course, we're going to be needing that. For the future, there's also a really good soul there you can get that's not that tough to get, but I don't have a good shield at this moment, so. God, that never gets old. That shit is so funny. Come on, Rook Boulder, get him. Interesting. He's going to hit me with that. Yeah, another one of those really bad, interesting trades. I might try the infinite poise backstep through the boulder coming up, but I've died before, which is kind of annoying. And as much as I like Sense Fortress, I don't like it enough to stay here forever. So this guy is going to chase me. And I really don't want to get him his buddy together if I can afford it. So I'm going to do that instead. I could fight this guy. I just never really fight the snakes if I'm I have to. I never really have to, so... No, don't look on! You're gonna get me fucking killed! Oh! Couldn't be dead. That was really, really close. I, I forgot how much time I had to do that. Suffice to say, I could have probably gone much higher, but it worked. And if you didn't know you can do that, it's pretty crazy that that happens and sometimes if you do it a little better than that you don't get hit by the boulder but my timing is clearly not so great so there's an unavoidable dude here who I have to run past and I don't if I can help it want his buddy to be interested in me but I bet his buddy is because it's that kind of game yeah we're gonna run this So that was a much smoother run considering I've not done sends in a while and as much as I, in my prime, I say in my prime, I could do sends relatively easily every single time, it's still a dangerous place that you have to respect. Everything in Dark Souls is. The moment you stop respecting it's the day it kills you again. And you never ever get to a point where that's not the case and I think that's probably the most endearing part of this game. Like Dark Souls 2? It's a lot harder to die in. I think, anyway. 
I still think it's the harder game. Because I just don't think it works as well. So, that is not what I wanted. That is. I'm not going for the divine. I'm also not going for the shop either. So this will be interesting. I don't really have the, the best DPS at this moment. So the golem's going to be interesting. I might not actually be able to, to hit him enough to knock him off. Which is annoying, but we'll see how it goes. This is the run of trades, it seems. So you should do the Golem Axe move. Which he kind of likes to do a lot. So yeah, our damage is, is a little bit scary. not want to get on the wrong side of that. That's a grab move. It's not the grab that's dangerous, it's where he puts you after it. Sometimes it has less to do with you than you like. Oh, interesting. That'd be great if he did that and killed himself, but I don't think he ever does. There's probably a video out there of it. But I've never seen it. But if I didn't believe things I've never seen... Wow. So I could be dead here if he throws me off. No, that's okay. I mean, it's not optimal, but we'll live. Fine, back. What a bitch. So did you see that, though? That's another thing that I don't like about this or the second game. Where grabs get you and they're not even touching you because they've got exaggerated hitboxes. It's... Oh, wow. My timing's not so good on that, apparently. This is a really bad golem fight. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if he was going to do the second hit to that. That was a lingering hitbox. Interesting. He did the backstep, but he was saved by an invisible wall. Yeah, this is what it looks like when you don't have the damage to knock him off. It's a little fucking annoying. But this is the moment of truth anyway. Can we get this chuff off? No. Unfortunate. Positioning wasn't great, but... Oh well. I just nearly killed myself. Oh wow, he moves some serious distance and it, none of it helps me. You notice that?
times like this when I miss the Tower 9, because at least when you're not that dude over, you can beat his fucking head. You do serious damage to him. You don't even need a good weapon to do that, it's just a case of, you know, knock him over, knock him over, and then big damage commences. I suppose this guy, this fight is a little bit reminiscent of the last giant. Because you pretty much do the same. Oh, wow. That was interesting. Not entirely sure why it hit me, but not really it. Sometimes it does a follow-up to that move. Oh, he's dizzy. I don't know what happened. I thought he was doing a new attack. What's the best move to hit him with at this point? Imagine if that hurt you. That would suck. Does his hand take more damage? He just takes stupid amounts anyway. That was meant to be a running attack, but Dark Souls 1 and 2, the running attack initiates so much slower in this game. Oh, that's why he hit me, because I went to the side that he didn't move on. Yeah, see you later, bro. Well, that lined up quite well. Carried away by Latrian descendants, and then we can hit the next bonfire. Rafters will be interesting with this weapon. Not looking forward to them. Then again, we are definitely feeling a lacking weapon. But when we get to the big blacksmith, we'll be able to get it up to needing chunks, and that's when it's going to really pay us back. For our faith in it. Or at least I hope it will. There's the bonfire. Let's put a couple more points into... Into attack. 